mean no. Okay, okay. Welcome back to episode number five of the From the Fabricator podcast. I am Max Perlstein. I am your host. Thank you again for joining me and for supporting this venture. It is appreciated. We have a very, very full show today. I've got David Mikowski from Ubiquitous Energy, Casey Anderson from ICD Coatings, Sam Hill from Oak Cliff Mirror and Glass, and also the Texas Glass Association, and my brother, Steve Perlstein, Stevie P, talking, uh, telling some stories I never heard before, which is fascinating uh, and a thrill for me. Uh, all of this coming up on today's show, uh, a lot going on. So thank you so much for checking this out and being with me. And, uh, you know, normally I start off every uh, podcast with what's going on in the world. And I think it's pretty obvious that we are continuing to battle some supply chain issues. We've seen it out in the marketplace. I hope everybody's being proactive and doing what you need to do, meaning communicate, communicating up and down the chain. Those are the big things. Uh, obviously, a lot going on with, with some acquisitions. We've seen a few that are popping up on the machinery side. We're seeing a few that are popping up on the glass fabricator side, security and protective side, bank glass side. Uh, so there's a lot of things percolating underneath the surface that uh, will be more evident probably by the time this podcast comes out uh, and in the weeks to come. Speaking of weeks to come, June 1st, Glass Build America registration opens. There'll be some special uh, influential being first to sign up sort of thing happening. Uh, so you want to do that June 1st, Glass Build America in Atlanta. People are excited for that. And also, I'll be at Texpo. Uh, I talked to Sam Hill about it a little bit later on in this podcast. I will be there next month. I'll report back on that. Um, so with all of that said, uh, we have a great show, uh, and I am very much looking forward to these guests. Uh, again, normally I go into a lot more detail here, but today, because of uh, how much I have power packed in here, uh, a little less of me, a lot more of them. Uh, I'm sure you'll understand, and we'll get back to uh, uh, something different next month, which I have three incredible guests lined up already for June. This has been a blessing, uh, quite frankly. Uh, talking to the people that I'm getting to talk to is mind-blowing uh, and very much appreciated. So thank you for checking it out. Uh, let, let's uh, stay with me. David Mikowski from Ubiquitous Energy, and you want to see this product because it is innovative and interesting. And uh, you know me, I'm into the tech side, and this this is uh, checking some boxes. So check that out. He's first, followed by Casey Anderson, Sam Hill, my brother Stevie P. Thank you so much for being here, checking it out. Here we go. All right, so first guest this this week, this month, is David Mikowski from Ubiquitous Energy. Uh, this is a, an exciting one for me because, as I mentioned uh, briefly in the open, I love the technology, and I love where this is going. I love the, the boxes it's checking. Uh, and I met David, I guess it's probably been about a year ago. We, we kind of knew each other being in the industry, but I, I met yep. you, what, about a year ago or so? Yeah, formally we met about a year ago, yep. Yeah, so... so let, let's start with you personally, because you're not new to the industry. You've been around the glass industry. Talk a little bit about your path and, you know, getting from, from where you were to now at Ubiquitous Energy. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Max. Uh, thanks so much again for having me uh, on, on the show. Really appreciate the opportunity to talk about what uh, Ubiquitous Energy is doing. Um, yeah, but my background really has been in glass uh, and glass coating uh, product development. Um I was fortunate enough to be part of the, the founding team that started Guardian uh, Industries Science and Technology Center around 2000, uh, when Guardian decided they wanted to become an innovator in the industry. So for about 10 years, uh, first 10 years, what really was mapping out how to do, uh, develop all the different SunGuard and ClimaGuard coatings that Guardian did uh, globally uh, and, and uh, launched those globally, and I was in, in charge of, you know, those product development efforts and the capital in, installations that went on globally to support that. And then really the last five years uh, at Guardian, I was uh, in uh, market development. We're, you know, forging new ground uh, for glass products going into industrial electronic applications like lighting, um, uh, automotive touch panel, a display, uh, digital signage and, uh, you know, two-way embedded LED mirrors. Uh, so, um, yeah, very rich background that. And I also, uh, 
uh, spent a couple of years at a electrochromic startup uh, called Heli Heliotrope Technologies, where uh, really got the, the bug for being in startups and really where glass can really head in the future. So, and that led me to Ubiquitous, who I've been with for about a year now. Awesome. Awesome. And, and I'm going to ask you about the, the, the dynamic space since you had some experience there, but uh, let's talk about ubiquitous energy. Uh, you know, it's uh, it is something, you know, very, very special. I didn't, I didn't know much about it until I got a presentation from you and that's what got my mind going. It was like, I, this has to be shown to, to the industry at large because it's, it's fantastic. So, you know, mm -hmm. would you mind taking me through the path and, and for, for our audience, what do we have here with, with ubiquitous energy and your products? Um, it, kind of looking at where, where we're in our path to industry right now. Is that kind of what you're asking? Yeah. Well, with, with the product, okay. the product offering, product offering, uh, the product offering. Well, with, uh, the product offering is we have a, a transparent, uh, photovoltaic coating, uh, that is a, a coating that is put directly on glass, uh, using very glass industry conventional vacuum coating techniques. And the way I like to describe it, it's like it's a surface to low E, but instead of reflecting the UV, uh, IR and near, near, near IR light, it absorbs it and converts it into electricity. So it's a low E that not only provides thermal and insulation benefit, but it also generates power. Uh, and the product construction can be adjusted, but our our main go-to-market is going to be targeting a traditional dual-pane uh, IGU construction with our uh, coating, which is called UE Power, uh, goes on the inside of the outer piece of glass or surface two. And the interior glass can be a standard glass or it can be some other value-added offering, uh, whoever wants to fit it within that pocket. It could be a surface three low E, it could be a tent, it could be an inboard Lamy, it could even be a VIG or a dynamic glazing. Um, so the key thing is that even in manufacturing, we're trying to emulate the low E process as much as possible uh, while we're integrating the unique components of our technology. We want to make it an easy lift for the industry. Sure. And that, and that technology is the, the power generation, uh, which, which I think you guys have taken a very smart and measured approach with, uh, you know, versus maybe some of the people in the past. Mm -hmm. And so, so to, there's some, probably some confusion, people that are watching this, you know, this is different than that traditional BIPV that came out, you know, probably in 2010, you know, it, you know, that, that had the, the chunky uh, black squares yeah. all over, or, or you, you had the ones that kind of look like a crushed diamond, you know, that was yeah. very obscure and you, you couldn't see. And it's also different than the dynamic, uh, you know, the electrochromic and thermochromic uh, uh, glass. Can you just explain the difference between what ubiquitous energy is doing versus those two angles? Um, yeah, I mean, the main difference between us and BIPV, traditional BIPV, is uh, the really the topic of aesthetic trade-offs. Um, uh, we feel our technology has little to no aesthetic trade-offs to be generating power. Uh, traditional BIPV, uh, the constraint is that there's low transparency either due to the solar cell integration within the vision area or on the edge, or there's unwanted strong color or glowing. Uh, so what a lot of people call truly transparent really isn't transparent compared to ours. So, um, and unlike dynamic glazing, uh, we're not looking to, to shade the glass at all. We're, we're just looking to be an energy harvester. But the cool thing is, is that it could actually power, uh, be a power source that enables dynamic glazing uh, to operate without need of getting power elsewhere. Uh, that the window itself could generate the power to actually switch the, the dynamic glazing without having to uh, uh, to do all new wiring. And that really opens up the whole retrofit or, or replacement uh, market. Whereas, you know, you look at dynamic glazing now, it's typically best suited for new installations where the, right. the building's ripped open, you can do the wiring as you needed. And it really has struggled with reglazing or, or retrofit. So this enables that possibility as well. Nice, nice. And, and so, uh, you know, the one thing that uh, when you had given me initial presentation, I like the fact that you, you and Ubiquitous Energy are, are taking a very smart approach to the marketplace. You're not coming out saying you can be the do all, be all, end all sort of product. 
what, what was the strategy behind on, on being more measured? Because I know there's pressure being, you know, in the position you are, you, you want to get your product out, you're excited about it, but you guys are taking, you know, that slow and steady wins the race, uh, which I really like. What, what went behind that? Just, just the theory of that's the better way to do it? Or, or uh, how did you guys come about with that? Well, I mean, we've had people go ahead of us, I mean, in the dynamic glazing space that uh, have served uh, really good lessons and hard lessons on, on how to do that right or wrong. Um, but one thing for sure is there's a ton of history and expertise within the glass industry market uh, and supply chain to draw from. And we've been fortunate that we've had uh, partners such as AGC and NSG who are global glass manufacturers, and we learned from them what requirements matter, how to prioritize the features of our offering, uh, not only at the product level, but to support the supply chain to allow for the, the best impact and the easiest adoption. Uh, you know, I'm not saying we started out that way. When we started out, uh, you know, the, the scientists were trying to maximize the efficiency of the, the transparent solar cell at all costs. And what this resulted with was very colorful uh, cells and ones with very low light transmission. And we were trying to do that at the sake of all else. But then when we got involved with these partners, we learned that you know, we really need to hold low E and solar control glass as our, our benchmark on, on this product introduction in terms of look and performance and even supply chain, because that, that's, you know, that's really our model. Uh, yeah. And so we've made trade-offs along the way to keep the aesthetics and the performance and the manufacturability in line with what the industry expects. And, um, you know, we know what the market is going to expect that they're not going to just adopt this because it's a cool technology. It has to look good. Yeah. It has to have high quality and durability, and it has to be economically viable for it to get adopted. So we've used these relationships to really help us formulate a strategy that will check all those boxes before we go to market. Yeah. And the key thing is, uh, we, we don't intend on being ubiquitous energy, the window manufacturer. Uh, we, we want to have manufacturing partners and distribution partners that are well-known players within the industry to come alongside to take this to market. Uh, we want everyone in the channel to still do what they do best. And in turn, we wanna do what we do best, which is transparent solar. Uh, we wanna make this a light lift for the market to adopt. And we want to disrupt what a window offering can be rather than disrupt the, the existing supply channel. We want to empower the, the, uh, the, the channel rather yeah. than compete against them. And, and, and that, that, I mean, I really respect and appreciate because I do think that uh, those who have come along who want to disrupt the channel and are probably in some ways disrupting the channel aren't probably doing anybody any favors because it's just made it very confusing and very fragmented out there. I, I'm talking with David Mac David Makowski of uh, Ubiquitous Energies, the director of channel development. I didn't uh, introduce you properly off the top. I apologize. Uh, you can find them on the web at ubiquitous.energy is their their website. Uh, great website to check out. And so. Uh, again, I, I really like the approach that you've you've got going, and 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 you as an industry veteran, um, you know, and you you you've been involved in you know you said it off the top in your in your your uh, your bio, you've been involved in in a lot of interesting things and a lot of cutting edge pro projects and products. Uh, what about this has has like energized you because you know this is not your first ro rodeo, but this is probably right. your most exciting right. rodeo at this point. Yeah, I. I think what, what really excites me about this is I love that it's a uh, it's a potential holy grail product in that it combines vision glass, low E properties, and BIPB all in one product. Right. Uh, the energy generation is no longer limited to just rooftop or uh, spandrel locations for BIPB. Uh, that um, I, I love the concept that it's a, a low E that generates power um, and and that we're taking an approach that will hopefully uh, minimize a, a lot of the risk of the unknown for people in the industry. Um, I'm also excited that the initial, uh, the initial durability testing we've done on this against industry standards, because a lot of people uh, uh, with any new product are concerned about the durability, especially UV exposure, and it's proven to be really robust uh, just at the prototype level 
uh, that we've done so far. Uh, there's been no chinks in the armor, no red flags. So it's really, you know, being an industry veteran and being in charge of, of commercializing a lot of products, that's something near and dear to my heart because I, I want to make sure the thing is pretty close to bulletproof by the time it goes to market. So, um, and I think another thing is the re response I've, I've received from people, my colleagues in the industry like yourself, but also people that are, are specifying jobs and facade uh, consultants. Right. They, these people you know, are being faced now with really aggressive sustainability goals, uh, net zero and net positive type of uh, projects. And with what's out there with double skin facades and triple silvers and things like that, um, they're, they're, it's really hard to reach some of these goals. They, they've told me it's like trying to squeeze water out of a rock. And uh, right. um, he said with, you know, just by looking at the modeling that they've done with our, our product and the headroom it gives, they, they have no problem. It gives them so much more room right. uh, to meet in that positive or net zero net positive building designs and actually allows some opportunity to take cost elsewhere out of the project. So. That's huge. And, and I think that that's a, um, you know, that's a big piece of this is, is the, you know, this is truly an energy product uh, that doesn't take away from the beauty of glass, the, 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 uh, the occupant comfort, the thermal comfort angle. I mean, you know, when I talk about, you know, checking the boxes, this checks the boxes, you know, and, 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 and unlike really anything that's come before it. And uh, I love the fact that you, you're, you know, you're not a newbie to, to this industry and you've worked on so many things uh, that that's what kind of gave me some confidence because, uh, you know, you know, from working around it, you know, you know, the scientists in our world are brilliant, but, but there's also that knowledge of this, this industry and what works and what doesn't work. And, you know, you know, working with facade consultants and, and working with architects. And so I, I'm, I'm impressed that you're, you're continuing to do your homework. And uh, I, I love that you're getting good feedback from people. Uh, that, that's that, is that surprise you? I mean, have, has anybody kicked back with you to say, oh no, this isn't going to work or has everything been pretty positive? Not as much as I thought, even with the people we're talking to, in the residential and commercial channel, uh, like when I go through the durability data, um, you know, of course they're going to want to do their own. But I, you know, we we we've done internal and we've done external third-party testing against the major durability test, and the challenge there's been very little challenge or pushback, which has really surprised me. Uh, which means that we've done our homework, and uh, yeah, we still have got to do it on a uh, at the commercial scale, but. You know, I thought for sure, uh, especially given that this is, uh, you know, our, our product has an organic component in it, that usually that's a red flag for anyone in the glass industry, any organic component, UV is going to kill it, it's going right. to die out in the right. field, and I mean, thousands of hours of, you know, intense UV exposure with no degradation in, in color, delta E, or in the efficiency of the unit, so um, it's just very, very encouraging. Uh, that's awesome. That, that's awesome. And, and again, uh, ubiquitous.energy is where you can find it online. And uh, the other thing is, is you and your company are active within the, uh, the various communities. I know that you've stepped up into things with NGA and, and, uh, and I, I know you'll be uh, out and about at Glassfield in the fall, which, which will be nice to continue to spread the, uh, spread the message of what you have going on here. Uh, and, and uh, you know, really, what, what are the next steps? I, I believe that residential is the first thing down the line, and then you're working your way into commercial. Is that still the plan? Yeah. I mean, right now we're doing um, a lot of pilot installations. We okay. have a pilot line at our headquarters in Redwood City, California, uh, that allows up to 14 by 20 size, which is, you know, industry test standard. But sure. we, we've been kind of creative with that. We uh, we did an installation of about 50 of the 14 by 20s at our headquarters, which is our, my virtual background here. <laughs> gotcha. is, uh, we have, uh, and that's actually producing enough power to power uh, the lights and all the electricity within those rooms on the interior. Uh, Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, uh, we had an installation at our partner NSG uh, at their Toledo uh, Technical Center. Um, and we also are completing an installation at a net zero building in Colorado and uh, a rather iconic New York City skyscraper uh, will be announced in the very near future. Wonderful. Um, as well as a university here in the Midwest. So uh, that's what we're focusing is getting more, more pilot installations out there, 
people can go look and see it, see the, the, the energy being generated for themselves. And um, uh, really what we're gearing up for now is commercialization. Um, we just received a, uh, a second uh, grant from the California Energy Commission right. uh, on their ramp program. Uh, that along with a strategic investment uh, from Enios, which is the largest uh, energy supplier in Japan, uh, is really fueling us for manufacturing and commercialization. So the first market is going to be, like you said, residential window. And the concept there is what we call power at the window, where we're just looking for our uh, transparent uh, PV cell, which is the, the window, to gather enough energy to power what's needed at the window, whether that be uh, motorized blinds, uh, mechanization of venting and open and closing, locking it, uh, security features like in built-in security cameras, proximity sensors, sensors for comfort uh, that can trigger the rest actions in the rest of your smart home hub, whether uh, that's temperature illumination that can dim your lights or or talk to your nest to nice. adjust the uh, and that's what that's the whole concept there. And then the second uh, market is going to be commercial, which is right behind it. The reason it's second is mostly because it's a longer longer boil, as you know, right. Max. It, it right. Projects take a long time, but we're, we're really getting geared into that. And that concept is more of a vertical energy farm, using the skin of the building, the yes. envelope, to be a large area, to gather all that energy and basically transmit it directly to uh, the building management system to either go into on locally stored uh, batteries or go back to the grid uh, at, during uh, peak hours, so that's kind of what we're focused on right now. No, and that's and that's and that's brilliant. I, I like the focus. I like the approach, and uh, I, I love the uh, the collaboration uh, aspect that you guys are talking about. And uh, you know, and I, again, I've always felt that the windows. You know, if you can make a window active, uh, you know, that it's just such a wide open opportunity. And and we've never been able to get something that's been transparent. Uh, truly transparent. And uh, I think you guys have unlocked that. And that's what's so exciting about ubiquitous energy and so exciting about, uh, you know, the, the, the future here. And uh, I, I'm thrilled. I feel like, I feel like I'm on, I'm, I'm on the, uh, the first step. I'm, I'm you know, on, on the ground floor here of this, uh, this rocket ship yeah. going to the moon. So, and I'm sure you probably feel the same way. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Fe I'm, I'm feeling that Saturn V uh, engine behind me every day, believe me. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure you do, it, it, for many different reasons too. You know, so I, exactly. I, I get that. But uh, no, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, if, if again, that's David Makowski from uh, Ubiquitous Energy. He's their director of channel development, and their website again is ubiquitous.energy. Uh, check that out, and uh, again, get ready to see this thing uh, really, really doing positive, positive things for our industry and our world. Thank you so much, David. I really appreciate the time. Thanks again, Max. I uh, really appreciate it. Good catching up with you. Okay, we will be right back with more of these interviews right after this. Glass Build America is back. Goodbye virtual shows, hello real products, real people, and real business opportunities. The industry is reuniting at the largest glass, glazing, window, and door event in the Western Hemisphere for the buying and business building that only an in-person trade show can deliver the leading commercial glazing contractors, glass fabricators, and residential fenestration manufacturers and installers are heading to Atlanta September 13th through 15th for Glass Build America, the Glass Window and Door Expo. Strengthen your supply chain and get the tools, products, and resources to future-proof your business. Your competition will be at Glass Build, will you? For more information and to register, visit glassbuild.com. Okay, I am absolutely pleased for my uh, to welcome in my next guest, Casey Anderson from ICD Coatings. Uh, she is the marketing manager there. ICD Coatings can be found on the web at www.icdcoatings.com. Uh, Casey is somebody that I have admired from afar. Uh, I think I've gotten to meet you maybe once in person or we, we've met in person, I think real quick, but you're very popular. So I, I don't think I got within your universe. Uh, but uh but really admired you and, and looking forward to talking through your career, you know, joining the glass industry, ICD, volunteering, and so on and so forth. So thank you so much for giving me the time today and being on the From the Fabricator podcast. 
Absolutely. Thanks so much, Max, for having me. Um, we did meet, I think it was at Glass Build 2019. Okay. Um, that was an awesome event. Uh, that was really actually not too long before everything kind of shut down. So that was a, that was a big one. True, true. Okay. It, it, my memory is, is, my son picks on me. My poor memory is, is, is struggling. You know, I, I confused Michael Jackson and Michael Jordan last week and, and, and he picks on me and I mention it all the time because I still can't believe I, I, I mixed those two up. But anyway, uh, on to the important stuff, the interview. I, I, I'm, I, I mean, again, I'm not joking when I say it's exciting to get to, to know you a little bit better because I've been so impressed with what you've done. And I wanted to talk to you first about your path to the glass industry. And what was fascinating is you kind of gave me a heads up about your path. And you want to talk about mind blown, you know, that, that meme of the guy's mind going like that. It was Nike, the theater world, the movie business. I mean, yeah. you did not take, you did not take the typical path to the glass no. and glazing industry. It's amazing. No. So talk a little bit about how you found your way to us. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a curvy path, as uh, as you had mentioned, and I I got my degree in theater design, just you know starting off from the get go, Western Washington University, and from that point I actually realized that theater was not going to necessarily get me to where I wanted to be in life, and I was like, what does that transition look like? What does the next step look like? And I saw some parallels actually between the business world and theater, where I was like, project deadlines, you know, budgets, having to collaborate with people, like this all aligns. And so I, I ended up landing a job at an ad agency called uh, Via Creative. Mm -hmm. And I learned a great a ton of skills, uh, including also like Adobe, Photoshop, Illustrator, those types of design programs. So getting mm -hmm. kind of into the graphic design aspect of things, mm -hmm. um, uh, photo management, layout, all those parts and pieces. And then from there, um, I ended up at uh, Nike for a little bit. And uh, that was just, you know, a friend of a friend was, they, they were looking to fill a position. And I had, you know, from a sales presentation standpoint and designing uh, what those sets and uh, visuals were, right. I had kind of that theater background. There was a few skills that I had built up that felt like a good match and sure. they felt so too. Too. So I got to travel a little bit. I got to design some setups for them. Um, I got to talk, you know, global strategy and execution, which was really, you know, mind blowing for me um, on how to execute on such a large scale. And so gained a bunch of uh, parts and pieces from that too. And then from Nike, another friend of a friend, it's all about networking, right? Yeah. Said, hey, you know, do you want to stay at Nike for a little while? And I go, you know, is that the end goal? And I said, well, it's a little corporate for me. I'd love to kind of get back into the art world a little bit. And someone recommended Leica. And so I, I uh, interviewed and got a position as art department coordinator on the Oscar nominated now Kubo and the Two Strings, which was pretty crazy. And that was awesome. That was like bucket list um, sure. to have the art and like miniature theater and I learned also just a ton of skills in that experience as well with interdepartmental negotiation um, we have puppets rigging vfx all these different uh, angles and timeline management a lot of right. similar themes across right. all the positions that I've had and then from Leica um, that was quite a commute. That was in Hillsborough, Oregon, and I'm up okay. here in Vancouver, Washington. So I was like, eh, do I really want to do this for another few years? And I was like, no, I think I'll come to this side of the river, the Washington side. And I found a company called Oki, which was a children's rainwear brand. Okay. And they were looking for a marketing team of one and okay. to like do it all concept development design, which pulls in my kind of costume design background. And I put all that stuff together and I learned the manufacturing processes. I traveled to China and learned, you know, what, wow. is, what does all of that look like on that side and importing. And it was just, uh, it was a really cool experience. Mm -hmm. And then they moved the company to Salt Lake City. Wow. And all, I know, all my family is here. My husband's family is here. And I'm sure. like, I can't leave. So right. I started looking around. I was volunteering at the time with uh, Casa for Children and somebody on the board with me uh, worked for a noticeable, uh, notable placement agency. And I was like, hey, just putting a bug in here. I'm looking for something. And that's how I found ICD. Wonderful. And 
Yeah, so it was so roundabout that I, I wasn't necessarily looking to get into architectural, but I was like, it is a perfect fit, right? It is. It's fascinating because, you know, it, you know, every week or every, every, every podcast that I do, I learn something new about people. And like Mary Avery, who I had on last month, you know, I was blown away at her path. And now your path also blows me away because, uh, you know, on many reasons of where you work, but also the way that you were able to take the different lessons along the way and incorporate them in grows like building that foundation up and 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 from when you started with oh i gotta learn photoshop all the way to you know where you're at now it, it's a pretty fascinating progression and and we've got this into the industry i say we as an industry we get this this really well-rounded person coming into our world and and i could tell the difference that you're making because we're going to talk about it but I, I mean i think your past really plays into the success you've had at icd so congrats on that Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, um, yeah, now three years with ICD and mm -hmm. I, I love the, uh, interplay of yeah. all the different skill sets that I have that I can bring to the table. And I'm, I'm not thinking inside the box. That's the thing. It's like, I'm coming to the table and saying what I'm not looking at what has been done or what hasn't been done. I'm just saying, this is a really cool new idea, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and I think, uh, I mean, I, I've known the Vocklers pretty much my entire professional career. Uh, they helped, uh, you know, and my brother's on this podcast later on, and he, he talks about, you know, how ICD was one of those first people that we had hooked up with when we had our fabricating uh, company and Larry and Trish and Chris, great people. And you fit into that and they have that great culture. Uh, and so it's obvious that you connected with that culture and now, you know, fostering it and going forward. So congrats to you. This is exciting stuff. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, so, you know, uh, you know, I, and I'm going to fl flip flop a few things. I gave you a little bit of an outline, but on, on ICD, since we're talking about it, w what's really impressed me about what you've been able to do in your three years there is the way you've taken it technically to another level, uh, the way that you've improved its standing in, in the architectural side and, and so on. I mean, you've really, really helped remake a lot of the things that, that, that were going on there, that has to be really exciting for you coming in new and having that blank slate to work with and then going with it. Yeah, I think coming in was really exciting and, and is a part of that onboarding process. It really was about learning past, you know, wins, um, learning experiences, AKA fails, right? Yeah, losses, and, right. Yeah, right, losses. And I think that there's a, there's an opportunity there to also say, what can we take that already exists in a, you know, maybe a kernel and yeah. where can we grow, right? What, what exists that feels really exciting and new and that we want to capitalize on. And that's really what we did is the technical information was always there. Right. It was just, we, we weren't necessarily talking about it or putting it out there in a way that was accessible to people um, on a larger format. So yeah. And, and now you are, and that's, that's been another one of those, uh, you know, interesting kind of connections between past guests. I, I, I love what Gold Ray does with Kathy Soroka and their technical side. And again, Mary with Tube Light and, and Heather West and their technical side. And you've, you've done this, uh, you know, with you and your team and, and, and your coworkers there. And I, I commend you for that because it makes us look better as an industry overall when all that happens. So congrats to you. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I honestly, I cannot take full credit for it. It is a team effort. Um, everybody has to get involved in, uh, through each, through each phase. So, um, no, I'm, I'm very thankful for an extremely supportive team and, and everyone's super passionate. Yeah, it's a good group, a good group. And, and so talking about that group, uh, you sent me a project to, uh, to show to our audience. So those of you watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see it uh, on your screen. This is in Utah. And it is the DeLong School, and it, it is stunning. Uh, it talk me through how this whole thing came about, because I know this wasn't here's the order, figure it out sort of thing. You got you worked this thing. This 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 did not come uh, come uh, I think super easy, and but it shows because it's stunning. It's stunning. Yeah. So yeah, it was a Elizabeth DeLong School for the Deaf in Utah, and the the uh, Jacoby Architects actually had gone through and bought these goggles. I actually, I spoke with Joe recently and he told me this story that they had bought these visual impairment goggles that helped them understand what the kids were going to be experiencing in these spaces, in the, in the deaf and the blind schools. And he said that visual contrast was key and they really determined that they needed bright colors against more neutral backgrounds. And when they landed on this yellow color, it was like this yellow had to match across several substrates and 
he chose glass in this particular instance um, because it was like maintenance free. Um, it was a high end look and they really gave him the, a passcode in particular, gave him the color that they wanted through the color matching uh, process. And so uh, we were able to get them samples really quickly. And it was the Vitro Starfire low iron glass right. that really made that color pop. And right. so, um, yeah, it was a quick, quick project. Um, True Light uh, was the fabricator on that. And NGA, NGI glass uh, in Utah was the glazer. And so, and it was a passcode 300, 7-1146 sun-kissed yellow uh, sun -kissed color. Yellow. Yeah, yeah. I, I, lo I love the naming constitutions you guys have there too. So I'm a big name guy. So I, I, lo I love it. Sun-kissed yellow uh, sums it up, but uh, kudos to the architect, kudos to you and True Light and the, the rest of the team, uh, Vitro, obviously, uh, on a job well done that makes, again, our industry look great. Uh, yeah. because they, they could have chosen other building materials and, but, but they chose glass and you, you guys delivered and, and, and that's the, that's the name of the game at the end of the day. So congrats on that. Thank you for sharing that one. So, yeah, absolutely. so, uh, you, you know, 2021, uh, has been an interesting year so far. Uh, you know, we're, we're kind of coming out of the COVID thing, which is, is, is seemingly coming out of it. At least I feel like we are, uh, yeah. you know, how, how's it going for you guys? How, how's life in the Pacific Northwest? Uh, everything, you know, headed in the right direction here for the rest of 2021. Yeah. So 2021 has been go, go, go nonstop. Um, in general, in the Pacific Northwest, it's, it's getting a little bit warmer earlier here, okay. um, which is usually we have rain up until July, the end of July 4th, right. July 5th. It's nice after that. And I think the nice weather actually has kind of propelled people to get out and get more construction done earlier. Good. We're seeing a lot more activity in the area, which is great. Um, and in general, just as a go, go, go mentality, we have a lot of virtual, um, education, uh, and marketing initiatives initiatives lined up and we're we're looking to pivot at some point because we know that everyone's having zoom fatigue right they yeah. are ready to get back out onto the road and get out back to seeing people and so we're planning for that we're planning for you know sometime fall winter to make that transition to what that next step looks like whether it's a, a hybrid um or something new something sure. exciting sure. um I'm not betting against you on the something new, something exciting. I mean, you're 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 like working on Oscar award-winning films in your past. Nike shoes. You're going to come up with something that's great. I I know that. Yeah, no pressure whatsoever. No pressure. No yeah. pressure. <laughs> I, I like it. I'm excited for you. I, I think that's uh, that's a good thing. And the other thing I wanted to bring up is uh is is your 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 ability to get involved. You're three years in the industry, but you're a volunteer and you're into it. Um, I like that. I, again, I think that's an, another thing that I like to press on is is giving back and. You know, what, what was the thing that drove you to, Hey, I need to get in front of the, you know, in front of the industry and volunteer, especially when you're relatively new. Cause so, we, you know, this is an industry that's built on relationships and, and so on. It's hard to kind of, you know, sometimes dig your way in. So you got to have that personality, which you obviously do, but what, what was, what drove you into, you know, getting heavy into the volunteering into the industry? Yeah. Well, my, my history is in volunteering in general. Um, I've, I've served on a couple boards. Uh, I serve right now on a technical, uh, uh, education board locally. And I, I really think that being involved is where you're going to get the largest insight in what's happening in your industry from a communication standpoint. But it's, you know, it's not only necessarily being there to participate, it's being there to listen to. Um, and I think that our team members on ICD in general are, they're passionate and they want to help problem solve and they want to be involved. And so I want to, I wanted to match that energy and it was pretty easy coming in. There's an opportunity there um, for not only newcomers, but veterans, anybody really on the whole scale uh, to, to get involved and to communicate and, and see what they have to share and bring to the table. Perfect. Perfect. And, and so Last but not least, uh, you know, you, you have that, that personality that just goes for days, you know, and I love it. Uh, what, what, though, what energizes you in that personality and what energizes you about this industry? What, you know, you know, obviously don't want to lose you in this industry. You're doing great, but what, what, what's got you fired up about the glass industry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, what's most exciting is 
the broadening mindset of the architect and the specifier. Um, it cool. really is a, a digging into more information, giving them the heavier stuff. They don't want fluff. Um, they really do want that technical piece. They want to know what is your product? What makes it technically or performance different from anything else that they're going to look at? And why does that matter? And the main piece along with that is also looking at how marketing is worded um, and picking up on, on cues and keywords and phrases and stuff like, you know, once installed or when fired on, when they're talking about green and sustainability, it kind of like tips this scale of, oh, is it not green or sustainable at some point, you know, and they right. start digging in a little bit more, right? And so the benefit is, ICD works with clean chemistry. We, we mm -hmm. do water-based coatings, right? And so there's an advantage there that we, we don't have to qualify when we are and aren't green. Um, so that, that's a huge success for us um, in, in this trend in particular, but that's what's most exciting is that people are starting to really look and see and, and reveal um, the, the opportunity for finding truly sustainable materials to use. I love it. And that's such a great answer. And I love the fact that you nailed one of the things I've been pressing on. And, and it's, it's sadly, it's a weakness of mine. But, but the thing is, is that people are dying for that technical info. Yeah. The, the fluff has its place here and there because there's an ego play, but it's that technical chops. And I suck at technical. I mean, I depend on you know, the people like you, you know, you and, and Irma so well and Tom Culp and, you know, Adrian Lowenstein from, from Skyline Windows is brilliant, you know, and I can't, I struggle on that. I'm, I'm, I'm all fluff, you know, I mean, and so, uh, you know, but I agree because I hear that all the time is that, oh, I just want the tech. I want that, that, those details and it does resonate. So good for you. You've, you've, uh, you've nailed yet another one. So that's, that's good. That's good. So, so will I see you at Glassfield? Will we, you know, since, since, since I do think we did meet in 2019 at Glassfield, am I going to see you in Atlanta here in 2021 in a, in a, in a couple months? Absolutely. Yep. We wouldn't miss it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, I, I am thrilled that you took the time. I know you're a busy person. That's Casey Anderson, marketing manager, ICD Coatings. You can find them on the web at www.icdcoatings.com. Uh, and if you go to Glassfield, you'll get to see her. She'll be bebopping around there. Or if you get involved at NGA or any of the committees, you, you may run into her there too. Uh, this was a thrill getting, you know, and this wasn't even close to enough time. So I look forward to cornering oh. you. I got, I got about 700 Nike questions for you that I'll have to corner you on, uh, you know, somewhere down the line, but thank you so much for taking the time. You are awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much, Max. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So a uh, special guest here. We've got a big event coming up in the industry uh, next week, May 20th and 21st, Texpo. Uh, from the Texas Glass Association, my favorite glass association in the whole wide world with some of my favorite people. And I am thrilled to be joined by Sam Hill from Oak Cliff Mirror and Glass uh, on the board of directors of, Tex of the Texas Glass Association. And I just wanted to uh, you know, quickly catch up with you a little bit. Texpo, next week, uh, you've got to be excited to get back in action and see all of us uh, once again, right? Yeah, Texpo is uh, really taken off this year. I mean, it's... Uh... Um, probably based on what I'm, I've been told, pre-registration for this event is is exceeded the 2018 event already. It's sure. still a week away. Yeah. Um, there's probably a little over a hundred exhibitors mm -hmm. on the at the floor show with um, this year. There's um, um, I think 10 or 11 uh, seminars, educational seminars coming right. up. Um, one of the, um, the keynote speaker again this year is uh, Janine Driver. I don't know if, you, if you're familiar with, with her, but she's the author of uh, a, a book, um, You Say More Than You Think. Right, uh, the body language. She's an expert in right. reading right. body language and, yeah, and using body language. So she's right. gonna be our keynote speaker for the event. Uh, the Texas Glass Association is co-sponsor of this event uh, with U.S. Glass Magazine. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, so, and we're looking forward to a good event. Also, you know, in conjunction with this event, the the Texas Glass Association hosts their um, golf tournament, which will be on uh, 
May the 19th, right. um, the day before the start of the of, of, of Texpo. And that golf tournament um, is sold out. We're, we're, we're booked up with, with teams, which is a good indication that people are ready to get out of the uh, house and, and get out and start meeting people again. So a- Absolutely. So really and, I'm ex- and I'm excited to, to be able to come down. I won't be at the, uh, the golf outing. I don't think the course could handle the way I hack around a golf course. Uh, but to get to see you and everybody else uh, in San Antonio uh, is w- what really excites me next Thursday and Friday, the 20th and 21st. Uh, how, how switching to you, how, how has it been for, for you, Sam Hill and Oak Cliff? Uh, it's been a heck of a year with COVID. How are you guys holding up? Um, really good. I mean, we, we fared the, um, the uh, pandemic relatively well. Um, for last year, we were we were fortunate that we we pretty much had our backlog set prior to the shutdown, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were, and you know, being an essential business, we re- never really stopped. We, I mean, we we suffered uh, personally with the uh, with the virus, as did a number of people. We had a, a number of our employees that uh, that came down with it and had to miss time, but. Uh, Overall, the our business kept um, kept um, moving uh, quite well. So, um, you know, we we took all the necessary precautions as everyone does. All the job sites that we work on, those uh, um, job sites, uh, they were all um, uh, took all the safety precautions that that needed to be taken to keep everybody safe. So, so. Uh, I hate to you say business as usual, but it it was uh, pretty close to normal for us outside of, you know, losing, you know, we might probably the most we had it out at one time might've been five or six employees okay. uh, on quarantine at one time. So that really wasn't, um, didn't have a major effect on our ability to perform. So. Good, 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 good. And so, and so, and so uh, then last, cause I, I know you're, you're busy. I mean, you, you've got a great company and obviously with Texpo coming up, you got a lot going on, but I want to ask you about the TGA Texas class association. As I said before, it's my favorite, uh, I've been honored to, to speak with you guys, speak in front of you guys a couple times at your glass conference in the, the off years of Texpo. How is the TGA doing? Uh, what's new there? Everybody doing okay in that great organization of yours? The, um, the TGA is doing uh, quite well. Again, with the pandemic, we, didn't, we, we still held quarterly meetings uh, last year. Um, We've, uh, you know, got our board going. We got our, all the committees are working hard. We're, we're, um, uh, we got a a few projects that we're working on and, and, and they're all going well. Obviously we couldn't meet in person. So we had to do a lot of virtual meetings uh, either as a board in general or as, as committees. Um, We're hoping to, you know, roll out at, uh, at, um, Texpo, we're, we're a new and improved website. Uh, hopefully, it's more user friendly, so uh, easier to to navigate and do around. So we're we got a committee working on that uh, um, as we speak. So and that that will be a, a I think a huge improvement for us. Uh, we're also working diligently on a uh, a uh, training program for new hires and and recruits. Super. Uh, Super. We hope to at least have a little bit of information at Texpo concerning that. We're we're getting closer and closer. Our goal is to be able to start taking um, students um, in the fall, mm-hmm. but we, we've got a, still got a little work to do to do that. Um, and we're working with um, um, the uh, the uh, NGA myglassclass.com will be the uh, virtual learning tool that we'll be using super and we, we've uh, we've worked uh, with um, uh, AGMT Jeff Dolliver's mm. group to um, to structure our program to where it will fit into his program so um, uh, but we still got work to do but I think we're we're, we're, we're gonna get there I've got got a lot of um, on our, the board this year, we got a, I got a lot of younger um, industry professionals that are really, uh, really, it's um, really heartwarming to see. I guess that they're taking such an interest 
in improving our industry to, that, uh, that they've really done a, a, a great job of putting this uh, training program together. So. Absolutely. And, and, and I am impressed with, uh, I, I mean, obviously I love everything that you guys do, but the, I like the mix of your board uh, with the experience and the, and the younger generation coming through there. And then just, uh, I, I remember, you know, when we were together in Nashville at BEC, you had mentioned the training and being able to take this next step. And uh, I'm thrilled that it's continuing uh, because uh, a, a lot of things got, uh, you know, set aside when, when COVID hit. And so it just, uh, kudos to you and the team at TGA to continue to push through because it's so important. Uh, and and uh, I love that you're involved with my glass class and Jeff Dalaba and, and Ben Beeler and that group with uh, AGMT, great people all the way around. So it's a great mix. Congratulations to you on all of that. Right. Yeah. Uh, Jenny Chase at the National Glass Association has been a really, really big help in, in, in helping us um, navigate through the myglassclass.com to to make you know to, to use you know to use that tool to our advantage and and um, so and we're we're so it's going to it, I'm excited about it it's going to be a, a, a really good tool for for a, a lot of a lot of people so fantastic um, and another event that you're quite familiar with uh, next May where we'll start work we'll after Texpo we're going to start working on our, our third glass conference. Um, the daily, um, you know, uh, event that we put together yep. uh, to to, uh, to provide education and information to to, to our members that um, in the off years when Texpo isn't held. So, right. So we'll we we've, we've got a committee together that will start putting that uh, program together once we get uh, Texpo behind us. So. Wonderful. Yeah, I love the Texas Glass Conference that you do. Uh, it's been in. Uh, um, Waco the last couple of times and in a great right. venue there and uh, honored to be involved with that. And I look forward to uh, helping out anywhere I can on that. But uh, I, I'm excited to see you at Texpo. I'm looking forward to uh, uh, elbow bumping you, uh, shaking your hand, hug, whatever we can get. I, I look forward to seeing you in person. I, I look I, forward I, to seeing you. Yeah, uh, it, absolutely. It'll be fun. It'll be, you know, an event where, you know, everyone I talk to says the same thing. We just look forward to getting out and, and seeing everyone again. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time. I will see you next week, and then uh, we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll keep this ball rolling into next year to the Texas Glass Conference, and uh, just uh, good things ahead for you and your family and, and the TGA. And thank you so much, Sam. Good, good thing, Mike. Look forward to seeing you next week. You bet. Thank you, sir. All right. So to finish things off, I normally do, you know, my, my fun stuff, but this month I've decided this last segment is all with my brother, Steve, Steve Perlstein, Stevie P definitely one of my heroes in life. He is an industry industry superstar. And I wrote about him at the end of the last year when I talked about the most influential people in the industry in the last 15 years. And I'm biased, but I saw it and I, I know that he is and he changed this space. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about his life talk about some people in the industry. And unlike everybody else on this podcast that I've had, uh, he has not seen an outline of these questions. So, right, you have not seen an outline. I'm in big trouble. You're, no, I'm I think you're going to be fine. Uh, so he was no. a little nervous, a little nervous, but 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 we're going to we're going to start. Go ahead. My older brother is going to get me here. That is one of the big questions is which one of us is older. Uh, and, 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 you know, I, people always get it wrong. So we'll have to do a poll after this. Uh, and see who is okay. most people know already, but if you don't, you'll have to guess which one of us is older uh, and which one of us feels older, which is definitely, definitely. No, that, definitely that's definitely me. That's definitely me. No, no, you're looking good. Looking good. So I have to start with my favorite thing about you. Uh, well, one of my many favorite things about you uh, is that when a lot of people I have on this podcast, me included, never wanted to be in the glass industry. You, though, wanted to be in the glass industry forever. Uh, so that, that the first question, what? how did this happen? I mean, most little kids are playing with like crayons and Play-Doh, and you're like, I want to be a glass jobber. How did that happen? Yeah, I'll tell you, it was it was crazy. It was like I, my, our father was our hero in life. And he wasn't the most warm and affectionate guy. You know, he's very quiet, um, but you could tell his life was the three most important things in his life was sports, you know, the glass business and family. 
as you said at his funeral, we just don't know what was first. Yeah, I think you named okay. the order there pretty well, yes. Yeah, and you know, I just, you know, to get, have time with him, you know, I just enjoyed it that every Saturday morning from when I was five years old up, he used to take, with, take me to his uh, office and I would hang out with him. And then on inventory, when they took inventory a couple of times a year, he would let me count out in the warehouse. And I, I just always wanted to be a glass jobber or a glass man. Um, I had to change my password out there because everybody knew they could get into my internet <laughs> by just saying glass man. Right. You know, so, I, so I had to change that. But um, I even, I wish I still had it. I can't find it. I think your mother threw it out. But you remember that picture I mm -hmm. had? Yep. And it was great. It was a house and a, and a ladder with a little guy and a bird in the sky and, and climbing up. I did it in kindergarten that I wanted to be a glass jobber. And it was in my office at our old place. And I just don't know what I did with it. I think I must have thrown it out or must have deteriorated after 50 years. But I just always loved going to with him and spending time with him and going to the office. And next thing you know, he put me in the next thing you know, he put me in his warehouse uh, when I was uh, 10, 11 years old. And I was unloading trailers of 50 foot boxes and 100 foot boxes. And back back in those days, you you didn't have them on pallets. You uh, you had a carried them well yeah. I actually used a two-wheeler and you got yeah. two or three on a two-wheeler and you took them off and then we had to lift them up and um and I that's what I did and then he put me out in the warehouse and I remember his worst day ever was when the, they were union back then yeah and his worst day ever was when they came into the office and said they wanted this uh 13 year old kid to start getting union wage <laughs> and so unfortunately my father had your father had to lay me off at 13 and it was a crushing blow to him. And, uh, but it was just something I've always enjoyed and always wanted to do. I just, you know, it was my dream. I, I can tell you one more quick story about Please. how Please. I knew. Um, I remember our father had the Board of Education contract okay. for the city of Pittsburgh. And I was in, I think I was in like third grade. And he was so proud of it. He came home and he was telling us, you know, I don't even think you were even a thought yet. I don't right. know if you were. Uh, I just let the, yeah, let we, the we, if, yeah. if people made it this far on the podcast, they'll know the answer now. So, okay. Well, what happened was he was so excited about having the board contract. And back then all it was, was, you know, 50 foot single and double strength. Cause everything was right. a, was a putty dig out. Right. And so I left school that afternoon and I'm walking home back then you walked home for lunch and you walked home after school and decided to take a rock to 65 windows. Oh. I and I broke this. every I broke every window, and I was so proud of myself. I went home and I said, "Mom, I got great news. Dad is going to get a big job from Sunnyside Elementary." And she said, "What do you mean?" And she says, "I says, Mom, I broke every window." Oh my and she gosh! Says, you did it. Well, once again, our father got home, and I, as the middle child, I actually caused him quite a bit of problems. That's why he had his both knees replaced and both shoulders replaced from kicking me up the steps or hitting me in the back seat. Yeah. Well, let's just say I got whooped a little bit and they took me to school and I had apologized. I had detention. Dad had to fix all the windows and had even his glazers from, you know, from their, their place, you know, from their union business. Yeah. They, they had to take care of it and get it all glazed. And here I thought I was being a hero. So oh my gosh. One that point i knew i was going to be a great salesman because i you know i took I, I figured out a way to sell some glass unreal i've never heard that i've never heard that that is uh, that is amazing well, and it's so you I don't though think your father was i don't think your father was so proud of that you know uh, so. he, you know, he was extremely <laughs> proud of you but he did say he didn't give me that one he didn't give me that one well yeah. you, you kind of said it so the, the interesting thing about us as a family is that that uh, we, when I was born there, there was a 14 year old, a 12 year old and a 10 year old, basically rounding up uh, kids. And so I was, there were three kids, two girls and you, uh, you know, obviously our sister Marcy, who was in the business with us and, and will get a big kick out of seeing us on this podcast. Uh, and our sister Sherry, who unfortunately passed away when I was really, really little. Uh, but, but, you know, 14, 12 and 10. And so I was definitely way out of the mix, you know, at, at that point, you know, and, and I didn't know my dad or our dad like you did, because, you know, basically, by the time I started to grow up, you guys raised me, you and Marcy raised me, you know, you know, dad yes. and mom really didn't. 
Uh, and right. so it was a, a totally different sort of world. You got to work for him. You got to see it. By the time I got into the business, you know, he was, you know, basically retired. He was, you know, he wasn't the, the driver that you had. I couldn't ever imagine him dealing with a union guy. I, 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 I could see him just going, eh. you know, I mean, there was just no interest, but I love that story. And I could see the reaction that he probably lost his mind. So that oh, was yeah, he lost. Yeah. Let's just say I drove your father crazy because <laughs> I, you know, as as some of my future par past partners would attest to, sometimes my mouth can get me into a little bit of trouble sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 for all of us, for both of us. Well, let's now talk. So, you, you know, when he uh, started Pearlstein Distributing in 1977, uh, you know, and that was at, you know, a new business, the, the company that you worked at was the old United Plate business that was sold out in 1968, I believe, and uh, owned by a big corporate group called Chromaloy. And so my dad left, right. our dad left, and, and you guys started PDC, Pearlstein Distributing. And I know you were in high school and in college, and his goal from the way it was always told to me was just to keep doing the 50 foot boxes thing, do the hardware, you know, you know, the hardware stores. I remember the hardware stores were the, like the big thing in our world, you know, and don't screw up the American hardware, hardware. American, American hardware. hardware. And I, I remember you getting into the business and this is where, you know, my admiration for you, you know, took off because you couldn't stand being small like that. You know, did you know right away, we got to change this thing or, or, you know, did it take some time? Well, you know, he started the business and I was a senior in college. Okay. And it was actually right when I was graduating, uh, high school, I mean, yeah. senior high school. And it was just right when I was graduating, I decided to go away to Miami, you know, University of Miami, Florida. Right. And, you know, he started the business and, and you know what, I was missing home. I was missing my girlfriend who ended up becoming my fiance, who ended up becoming my wife, who right. I will be married to 40 years you know, next week, awesome. which, you know, we got married when we were like 10, you know, and, I, and so I came home, I came home right away and I went full time with him when I was 17, 18. And I actually went to college at Duquesne at night right. and, and worked and got married very young. And at that point, you know, we, we had probably about five employees and we were doing strictly distribution items. Right. Um, you know, strictly, like you said, the, the single, the double, and at that time called plate, you know, right. and it was just now four inch float. Um, and, you know, as the business, you know, as, you know, I started going calling on hardware stores and pitcher framers, because, you know, you would sell non glare glass, all that kind of stuff. Right. I started seeing the opportunities out there, um, you know, and plus I wanted to make more money. Right. You know, so dad, you know, dad put me out on the road and, and we made commission at that time. You know, and I remember it was before the computer. So I had my notebook and I had every month what I did sales wise. And, and I remember, you know, approaching your father and saying, dad, you know, listen, you, you paid me, you paid me you know, 20, let's just say $25,000 this year. You know, how about you just take me off commission and just pay me that again next year. Right. I'm getting married. You know, I want to have some security and know what I'm doing. And he right. says, are you sure? And I says, yeah. He says, because well, don't come back to me when you see that you could have made a lot more. I said, Dad, don't worry. I just, I know I want to make, this is what I want to make and I'm right. satisfied. But okay, you know, if that's what you want. So I went out and I would have made 75,000 that year and I still got my 25 and, and dad didn't change my pay at all. So at that point, I knew that there was an opportunity out there. Right. And unfortunately, our father had a lot of different health issues in right. his life. Right. You know, he was like the bionic, bionic man. Yeah. You know, he had, like I said earlier, he had, new, he had replaced shoulders, he had replaced knees. Heart. You know, he ended up having a heart, open heart surgery. Right. You know, he had cancer, major mm -hmm. cancer yep. that they said that we got letters after he died that said he would last a year and that was 20 years later. Right. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we lost him to Lou Gehr AOS, Lou Gehrig's right. disease. Right. Um, so the, the man who was a, both of our heroes, he just mm -hmm. suffered through everything. Yeah. But the one thing that happened was every time he was off for something major, by the time he came back to work, we had already expanded the business. <laughs> right. Right. And the first time was he went off with his, um, I think it was his, uh, I want to say his open heart surgery. And next thing you know, he comes back and we're already ordering a IG line, you know, and, back, and it was GED's line and, you know, and we didn't even know what we were doing, you know, and we had to go find another building and we put it in another building and 
you know, and actually we were all just in, in putting it together to the IG together that right. I remember the first couple had bees in between it, you know, <laughs> like bugs and flies. And right. we told people no extra charge for that. <laughs> you know? Right. And, and that was the first time. Next time he took sick, I think it was the major cancer. He came back. We were moving and building our own facility and putting a tempering line in. You know, so it was uh, quite interesting. Quite interesting. I don't know why I decided this, but I didn't do it on myself. Uh, one thing about being uh, successful in business, as you know, is you got to surround yourself with good people. Which and did. I just didn't have good people. I had great people. Yes, you did. And that's how I followed it the whole time, my whole life, that I've always stated that that's the only way you succeed. You know, as much as a lot of times I'm being accused that it's I, 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 I do believe in team and I oh, do yeah. believe in surrounding. And I had some fantastic people that were around us from day one until now. Yeah, no, there, there's no doubt. I, I can attest to that. And, and I think we're going to talk about a little bit of the people in a little bit. But uh, the thing that really impressed me was that, you know, when you moved into tempering, and I remember when I joined the business, I had asked you, you know, what, what's the magic behind the whole tempering? And you had showed me the old tong uh, tempering with, with right. the tong marks, right. which to this right. day blows my mind that people would accept that. You know, I mean, right. it, it, right. there, there were tongs. Yeah, they freak out if the logo's in the wrong place. Or, I can't or, believe they set tongs. Exactly. If the logo's blurry, you know, it gets rejected. Well, and and yep. there were tong marks. And then you said, you know, people were waiting three weeks, four weeks for for, for it. And, and you know, it, it took forever. People were boarding up their businesses and so on. And you, you know, you know, were amongst the fabricators and, and pretty much the leader from when I did my research of turning that whole industry around where you could get tempered in two days or tempered, you know, next day if right. you needed it. Uh, and that changed right. the changed everything, you know, the speed of light, you know, that you had with the tempering. And, and I think that's, you know, obviously like open your eyes to so much more, right? Yeah, correct. It, you know, there was companies like Templas, they mm -hmm. were probably the, 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 the ones that started really offering that quick service. You know, back when you had uh, Hunter Glass, which is right. now, you know, went to Hort it was Hortus Hunter and then Old Castle. Right. You know, you had these companies that were out there, but then Templas, who's now part of the Old Castle uh, division, um, they really offered the service. They, right. they started this, but there again, they were out of town. Right. And I think that's what we started was along a lot of other people around the country started the local regional player. And we were the first ones in the area. And that really helped the situation and promoted it um, to give people that quick turnaround, the quick service. And people today look at where, what you paid years ago versus what you pay now. It's still probably 50 percent, you know, 50 percent what it used to be, you know, right. back in the day what you used to pay for. So, um, yeah, but that's what, so it was just there again, learning what, to, what the industry had to offer, going to the trade shows, talking to, you know, yeah. talking to other players out there, going to these meetings, you know, that the fat, fat factories used to send you to that, yeah. you know, LOF, which is now Pilkington used to have something called focus groups yep. and, you know, being involved with those focus groups, um, I think gave us some good ideas that we could bounce off our team and go from there. Sure, sure. It made a big difference. And, and, and you know, one of my other guests on today's podcast, Casey Anderson's from ICD, that was another area you got into, you know, really, really early, the Pasico. Um, exactly. Before, you know, and again, and that was, you know, something else that uh, I just, you know, we, you know, people might say, oh, you're just blowing up your brother because, you know, he's one of your heroes and, you know, he's an influencer. But I, I, I mean, you were ahead of the game. So I got to give that to you now. Right. The, 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 the flip side of being ahead of the game was we grew too fast, you know, yes. you, you know, I mean, we're, you know, and, and, and I know that you were, you, you were to the hilt, you and dad, I remember, you know, you know, your houses were involved, everything that had to be a nervous sort of time period for you as we were growing just incredibly fast that you just couldn't keep up with it. With one job goes bad, you're doing 60,000 square feet of insulating where a couple of years right. before, like you said, you were insulating flies in, in, in double strength units. That had to freak right. out that little period of time. Yes, and and that's probably why when a lot of people come to me today and say, "Why did you, you know, get out of the business? Why did you sell? Why did you do this?" Personally, I don't think we would have we would have made it. You know, it was um, we had unbelievable teams. Yeah. Um, but going through the two thousand eight, you know, going through that time, and I was long gone by then. You know, I was gone back in two thousand one. Um, 
but I really do believe that it was get, getting out of control and uh, the industry had to change. And I think, um, yeah, it was very nerve wracking, trust me. And, and I'm nothing, back then I was a, I was a screamer right. and a yeller and I would lose my temper. And you know, there's a lot of walls at PDC that I used to punch in and, and I, but I always knew where the studs were. <laughs> so I think it was an acting job. But the one time I remember his punching the wall and forgetting that it was a, forgetting that it was a, um, a, a brick stud wall. wall. Oh, brick wall. No, yeah. it, wasn't, it was a brick. <laughs> and no, that wasn't pretty. That wasn't pretty. But um, so, yeah, I would think that showed based on how I was always hyper and always, you know, really because I was so into it and it, it was a tough time. And uh, I probably wouldn't be living today <laughs> if, yeah. uh, if, it, if we wouldn't have uh, if done we what sold. we did. Yeah, no, it, it, there, there's a blessing in there because I think it was pretty intense. Now, you, the, the strength you have that I don't have, you know, amongst uh, others, but you can sell. I, I'm scared to death of selling. I'm not a salesperson. You right. are, are, are the opposite. Nothing fears you. You know, you don't, you've had the door slammed in your face. You've, you've, you, you, you have no fear when it comes to sales. Where does that come from? Because it's not our dad. Maybe it was. No. Is it uh, our mom? No. Or, uh, was it because our mom did? <laughs> That's a scary thought. <laughs> I mean, it's a scary thought. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where did you get that? Where did you get that skill set? Because that's not from anywhere I could see. You know what? I think our dad was that way when he was younger. Because okay. you hear a lot of stories about your father that people would come up to us and say, oh, "Your dad's crazy." You know, he drove the his car up the steps of Peabody High School, and you know, and he drove one day. He left. <laughs> he left Pittsburgh. And he ended up in Florida, you know, yeah. and we looked at each other and says, nah, our dad. So yeah. I think he was, he, he was probably not as reserved back when he was you know, younger. And I think I just always loved relationships yeah. and I've always loved the, just the, the people and getting to know people and loving, you know, to, to work with them and get to know them. And also the big key for me is what I really learned from day one was what sales were was always about it was you know taking care of a problem yeah yeah if you can solve somebody's problem yeah you become you become their their uh person yeah for forever yeah. you know and then you become friends with them and then you know and then the friends go from there you know you then you can start generating business from that friendship and that relationship you know and having you know that sense of urgency and attention to detail which right. I get picked on all the time by Bobby that I love using those phrases. Right. And the one other phrase I love to use too, is I used to take negatives and turn them into positives. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I, I don't know if I, that came from any of our, uh, our parents at all. I just think our dad might have been that way when he was younger, you know, um, but our mother, no, our mother wasn't that way either. So I think I just picked up on it that that was just my personality that um, that I just always enjoyed people and enjoyed relationships. Yeah. And because I do, I enjoy the relationships, but I can't ask for an order to save my life. You know, you, hey. you have, you, you have no problems but, asking for an order. So. Well, back then, yes. Yeah. Now it gets to a point where it's like, I, I can't handle now that I'm Willie Loman, I can't handle the, the rejections, the rejections. You're, yeah. You're, now you're you not, look like your father. You look yeah, like your no. father. Yeah. Our dad you know, used to. You know, I'll tell you something. The Cuomo boys have nothing on us. No, you know? they have nothing on us. That there's we're there's better no looking. We're yeah, better looking. Much smarter. better looking. And more people are going to watch this than watch CNN. I can tell you that. <laughs> so, so you were talking about people in relationships, and I, I actually have I have four names on, on a list here, and, and uh, they're industry people, and and I, I just curious what your thoughts are when they come to mind because I, I consider them all fantastic people, and I'm going to lead off with our friend Tom Nesbitt. What a you know tremendous man. Fantastic. I, I'll tell you what this what this man has done in his lifetime was amazing, and the loyalty that he showed our family too. Um, and there again, we were there for him. You know, at the at the beginning, and we became personal friends. We've traveled together. We've golfed together. We've we've laughed together. We've cried together. Yeah. You know, we both have had tragedies in our life, and I, I got I consider him my brother. I yeah. consider my brother. And he's just so knowledgeable. And I just, I'm so proud when I walk through his facility. I know he gets tired of hearing from me when I, when I walk through it and I say, oh my God, it's like, you know, I get tears in my eyes to know that this man has grown his business into an empire 
and he's and he and hasn't changed him. He's no. still same Tom Nesbitt, you know, and most knowledgeable person in that industry. And I'm just proud to call him my friend or my brother. Yeah, absolutely. And Tom is the owner of United Architectural Metals and United Glass and Panel in Ohio, uh, North Canton, Ohio. Uh, and I completely agree. Uh, the next one is is a guy that's had some adventures recently, but he's really important to our family, Bob Cummings. Yes, Bob. I tell you what, Bob, I was very lucky to have Bob come into my life. Yep. Yeah. You know, he is, I gotta have, probably say he's one of the one of the no, he probably is the reason we were able to take our old company from where it was to where it was when we sold it. Yeah. We were lucky enough to get him after he sold Standard Bent. Yep. Yeah. He sold the business and he worked for them. And I remember calling up the owners and saying to them, Hey, do you mind if I, you know, ask him to join us? At that point, we were just ready to start getting bigger. Yep. You know, you know, we were putting, we were moving to our new facility in 1990, you know, and I said, there's no way we're going to get this guy. No way. You know, uh, Mark Silverman, who was our partner, you know, mm -hmm. we talked and I said, we got to go after this guy. And um, we went after and he came on board. I tell you what, I thank my lucky stars every day because I would not be where I'm at today in business if it wasn't for Bob Cummings. Well, what, the most knowledgeable, you talk about a sales genius. Yeah. And you talk about somebody who, you know, understands solving a problem and understands that attention to detail. That was Bob Cummings. Yeah, I mean, great. he was just a perfect gentleman and he was just a great asset. And I just, you know what, he has nothing, you know, it's a shame was what just recently happened, but that guarantee you that was not Bob Cummings doing. Bob yeah. Cummings is a class individual and um and i'm thankful that he came into our life yeah great man great man all right we'll be back with more of stevie p steve perlstein right after this glass build america is back goodbye virtual shows hello real products real people and real business opportunities the industry is reuniting at the largest glass glazing window and door event in the western hemisphere for the buying and business building that only an in-person trade show can deliver the leading commercial glazing contractors, glass fabricators, and residential fenestration manufacturers and installers are heading to Atlanta September 13th through 15th for Glass Build America, the Glass Window and Door Expo. Strengthen your supply chain and get the tools, products, and resources to future-proof your business. Your competition will be at Glass Build. Will you? For more information and to register, visit glassbuild.com. Okay, another person on the, the list of people I'm curious about is Bill Wilson, Specified Systems. Bill, Bill has, been, um, has been with me from day one, and I've been with him since day one. Bill, Bill Wilson, you talk about a, a, a hell of a salesman. He, he is the ultimate salesperson. He's larger than life. Yeah. He's, la he's he larger is, than life. He is larger than life. He is definitely larger than life. And um, he, you know, and we were, we knew each other years ago when he was working at some other facility, other window companies. And I remember when he opened up at Specified, you know, he, he has one job, he had one large job for over a thousand uh, windows. And, and he tells the story all the time also, and nobody would give him credit, but we would give him credit. And from that day forward, he said, I will never forget that. And I gotta be honest, you hear that from customers all over this country. You know, I'll never, you know, and you know what? You, they forget it. This man never forgot it. And it even has followed through his next generation. Mm -hmm. So between Bill, who has become a personal friend of mine and also a brother of mine, to the point where we traveled and went to Israel together. Yep. And we, we actually got a chance to see both the Christian, Christian and Jewish view uh, of, of Israel. And we spent two weeks together there with our spouses and we had a fantastic time um, between him and then his daughter, Emily Yukish and son-in-law, Jimmy Highland um, are part of the business. And now I've grown my relationship from, you know, um, Bill down to his kids to the point where that's one of the reasons why I stick around is because I there again, once again, I love working with family businesses. 
and I consider these kids like my children and that, that I, I love that I can be there for both of them. And they both have done remarkable. Emily is incredible and Jimmy is unbelievable what they do, what he does. And they've been growing this business that as proud as Bill is, I'm probably just as proud of, of how these children have taken. They're, they're in the top 50 again this year for in uh, one of the magazines. Yeah. You know, so, so that, that he, he is one true friend that has followed me everywhere I've been where, you know, you know, that we, yeah. we've, we've, known, we've been there that people say, Oh, Max, don't worry. I'll, wherever you go, I'll buy from you or I'll support you. And where are they? Yeah. Some, sometimes it doesn't happen. And Bill, Bill is a class act. I've gotten to see him on a couple of occasions. I don't know him the way you do, but he's always uh, treated me and my family tremendously. Um, took a real interest in my son and what he was doing. And I always would be grateful for that. That was really cool. That yeah. Was really great, cool. great people and a great family. And I'm glad I can consider them not just customers, but um, you know, family to me. Perfect. Perfect. And uh, I had uh, last month, uh, I think it was last month, the months are all running together. Uh, Jimmy from AJ. Jim Stathopoulos from AJ. Jimmy, Jimmy and his family, you know, you know, with, you know, George, his father mm -hmm. and his brothers, they were just great to us. You know, I remember, you know, going and meeting with them, you know, in Rochester. And we were just there again, growing the business with Bruce Michaels, who was a, once again, a fantastic salesman yep. and a whole other story. You know, but he, you know, said, you got to come meet these people. And, and we went in there and we just hit it off. He, there again, once again, man who knows his business, who worked hard mm -hmm. to get where he's at today, has the same type of pride in his family. I remember watching the, 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 the podcast that you did with him. Yeah. You know, I got tears in my eyes because it reminded us, reminded me of us you know, with yeah. our dad. Yeah. You know, and it, it just I always have a soft, soft uh, spot in my heart for family businesses. Sure. And Jimmy is once again, is just like Tom Nesbitt with what he's grown and what I've seen in their facility. It's just second to none. And I'm just proud to know that we were part of that growth with them. And they appreciate that. To this day, I could call Jimmy and say, hey, help me on something. And he would do it. Yeah. And um it was, it was just, you know, just a fantastic person and a fantastic family. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Class acts, class acts. And, and so I'll end it with another family business angle here or end this little segment uh, is, is with, with uh, Bob Hartung, the first, the original Bob Hartung, uh, you know, you know, again, you're at WA Wilson now, and we're going to talk about that in a second, but uh, incredible man. And you probably never in your wildest dreams thought you'd be working with him someday. No, no. And, and, you know, I call him, and what I do is I, I call him, I call him dad, you know, a, after our dad passed and, you know, and, and I got involved with the Hartong family, you know, I, I said to him, would you mind if I call you dad? And he says, no, I'll be honored. And he, you know, once again, he had the, the has the reputation in the industry that will never, never go. It's, it's there. He, yeah. he is the man. You know, he worked at the NGA. He, you know, I mean, he was the uh, president, president of NGA, mm -hmm. you know, and he, you know, worked uh, the customers, knew the customers, you know, brought up, brought up a, a, a wonderful young man who ended up taking over the business, who yep. became my, became my partner, you know, and, um, and he just, I, I no, he would, if you interviewed him and asked him, could he ever see him being partners with Steve, Stevie P? He would yeah. laugh, you know, because we we're fierce competitors, but we had such respect for each other. Yeah. You know, we, we, it's similar to how, the respect I have for some of my other competitors, you know, yeah. where that there again, if there's ever a problem, I remember they had some issues with their plans, you know, and we helped them out and insulated for them. And they would have done the same thing for us. Right. Um, but, but and bottom line is, if there was, we bought, we fought for our orders, you know, he fought for his and we fought for ours. Yeah. And it's just a, this um, wonderful that it ended up in that, uh, in that, with that family. Yeah. Great family, the Hartong family and, and, uh, and Bobby you're working with, uh, you know, now. And so you, you joined WA Wilson in, was it 2011? 
Uh, yes, actually, actually, I'm, you know, my phone's going crazy because it's uh, my my ten year anniversary there. Gotcha. You know, and the LinkedIn, LinkedIn, you know, they put a, you know, I'm wondering like, how's all these people know? You know, <laughs> right, you know, it's, right. It's like middle of the night. I'm getting beep 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 on my phone, and it's like people that I haven't talked to yeah. for a hundred years are saying, "Congratulations, Stevie, on your ten year anniversary." You didn't realize all you have to do is press a button, and it does it. You're, these people aren't really writing me a personal message. Right. Right. Ten years. Ten years. Ten, ten years. So you 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 partner up with 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 the the Hartong family, and it's been an amazing ride there. Uh, you know, this was a this was a, almost like reliving some of the PDC angles where you expanded and you you brought in some people, and and and, and the company is 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 strong and, and focused and, and doing some really really good things. Once again, you know, and there again, it's it's because of the leadership of Bobby. You know, Bobby, Bob's son, Bobby, or I call him Bobby. I'm sure he goes by Bob, but uh, I always will call him Bobby. And yeah, his, he doesn't um, like he doesn't like me very much, so I don't I don't get get anything from Bob or Bobby or anything. So you you know, he, he, that's your guy. He doesn't even return emails from me. But go ahead. Yeah, right, right. All, all I can tell you is Bobby is um you know I remember him calling me that day, uh, ten years ago, and it was probably in like January, February. And, and he called and he says, listen, I got a question for you. Would you consider coming back? I was working for General Glass at the time. Mm -hmm. And he said, would you consider coming back and, uh, and becoming a partner? And there again, it was a minority ownership for me, mm -hmm. you know, and um, it was, I was never majority owner. It was minority. And I says, are you sure? And he, first of all, I was quiet. I didn't have anything to say on the phone. And I was like, uh, uh, uh. I have to talk to Amy and I'll get back to you. And we laugh about it because it's the first time ever Stevie P didn't have any words to say, you know, Funny. usually I'm like, yep. you know, going mile a minute. Yeah. And I was like shocked and I was excited and uh, yeah. And it was exciting to come back. And it's, you know, one of their questions when they asked me, when Bob and Bobby interviewed me and brought me in and, and talked to me, do I want to do this is, do I have a problem of taking orders from someone being so long at PDC and being right. the, the, the top dog? Um, and I said, oh, yeah, don't worry. I says, you know, I've been I was at Arch for 10 years working for Leon and, and the family. And then I worked for General for, for a year. I have no problem at all. You know, just don't worry. You're never going to have to worry about me telling you what to do. Right. Day one, day <laughs> one in a conference room. <laughs> You know, I says, you need to do this. You need to do this. You need this. And he, he Bobby's favorite, favorite expression is at ease, chief. At <laughs> ease, chief. I see that. I see what you mean, that you have no problem taking <laughs> orders from somebody. But it was fun. Um, we, we really had a good time growing the business. And we surrounded ourselves once again with great people. Yep. And, and um, based on Bobby's leadership, we were able to really take it to levels that I know our competitors are like shocked that we do what we do and that no, no no question no question it surprises people every time they 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 come into that now you know you're now kind of transitioning now into a, a new role in a, a new life uh talk a little bit about that um <clears throat> a year ago january uh bobby and myself decided that um that it, it's time for he first of all i owe my life because he saw that I really want to spend more time with my grandchildren. Right. You know, I have two grandchildren in Arizona. Um, and then I was hoping I'd have more in Pittsburgh. And we do have one coming, our baby, my little pumpkin, Sammy's having a baby in uh, September. So right. I will have one in Pittsburgh and Evan's getting married. My middle child's getting married in August. So hopefully he'll start bringing me. So Bobby saw that I really wanted to start spending more time with my family and who knew the pandemic would start, but right. at that point we agreed to start transitioning me over the next five years um and i took a semi-retirement right. where i no longer have <clears throat> any bobby handles uh, all decisions i do not oversee sales anymore i pretty much take care of a few customers and um and when i say take care it's more like just be there on the telephone go visit them sure. go see them continue the relationships for wa wilson and themselves and we're going to transition this over the next couple of years. And then I will then become a consultant. Um, so pretty much, um, I, I say I'm retired. Um, it's more a semi-retired, uh, probably working 20% a week 
um, in the industry, but I still get calls because there again, all the relationships we have yeah. with people. Um, I am getting calls from people every day. Hey, do you know where I can get this? Or, Hey, what would you do in this situation? Hey, you know, Stevie, what's going on? You know, and, and unfortunately every, every week we're losing somebody that we've known, you know, in this industry, it's been a terrible couple of years for us. Yeah. Um, and that's something that's been hurting too. And, and, and there again, it's, um, justifying what I've done because yeah. you know what I'm a young 60, 60. I'm in my, as Bobby says, I'm 61, but I'm in my 62nd year. And, um, and, but I want to start enjoying it. I want yeah. to start enjoying it or you never know what's going to happen. And, you know, unfortunately our father died young and we're yeah. seeing a lot of tragedies out there. And I, I'm glad that Bobby and myself have done this and it's a win-win for both of us. No doubt. And it's able, I mean, you know, I had to wait for you to, to shut your phone off because, you know, it was, you know, a customer calling, just checking on an order that you're still kind of keeping an eye on. So you might be, Correct. you might be uh, transitioning, but you're still heavily involved uh, at, at, yeah. at, a, at a few different levels for sure. I'm still getting calls every day. I'm still part of their conference calls every week. Um, Bobby and myself uh, to try to get together for lunch, you know, you know, every month. Um, he does, you know, I give him a lot of credit. He calls me a couple of times a week and we, we talk business and uh, you know what you talk about somebody who's been a brother to me, he has been a true brother. And, uh, and I, I appreciate everything he's done for myself and my family. Yeah. Good, a good man. A very good man. Yeah. Uh, there, there's well, no he comes from good stock. He comes from good stock and he's he does. Uh, proud to say that, uh, that he was my partner. Yep, absolutely. No, I agree. I agree. And and you you uh my, my last question and you you kind of hit on is you you won't be at Glassfield this year. Uh you know, as as much as I'm excited to to have Glassfield return in September, uh you're not going to be there for good reason. You you mentioned earlier uh Sammy, your daughter is is due in September uh with her first yeah. child and obviously that that you have an excuse now not to go. You know, that's that's a that's a big one. That's exciting. How pumped are you to have a grandchild in Pittsburgh? Well, it, it, we're going to have knock on wood. It's going to be a little boy. Yeah. And um, I'm so excited. And, uh, you know, and, and there again, I, I'm kind of hoping she has a, maybe a couple of weeks early that maybe I can then slide out, you know, to yep. go to go to uh, Glassfield because um, I'm going to continue to go into these shows. I, I'm going to go myself because I do value our relationships with all of, all of our friends that we build up over the years. Sure. And I'm, but it's just so exciting to, I never thought being a grandparent would be so much fun. And, you know, I'm a papa. That's what they yeah. call me. And uh, it's just, it's just, I, I tell everybody out there, just wait, you know, you'll never, never will expect how wonderful it is to become a, a, a papa. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm, I'm pumped for you. I'm pumped to, uh, to have a, a, another nephew, uh, or I guess uh, a great nephew, I guess. A, a great nephew. Yeah, a great nephew. I'm the great uncle or whatever. So yeah, uh, it, 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 it's, it's, uh, it's very exciting. And, and uh, you know, speaking of industry events, I mean, you know, one of the things that people know about you is that when you would come to BEC, instead of coming to BEC, you would hang out at the bar, even though you don't drink, at the, at the bottom of the escalator, and you hit all 700 attendees at the same time coming by to see you. You know, and me working for the NGA, it would piss me off. It was like, dude, come to the friggin' show. You know, you're like, I don't have to go to the show. I could just stand here at this bar. They all come to me. So yeah. I, I can tell yeah. you, they're probably going to create a section in Nashville next year that you can't do that. So, you know, you'll have to come to the show. So, but I all sleep during the meetings. I know your meetings are fantastic, but my attention span's gone right now. I mean, I, 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 I have, to, I have afternoon naps I take now that I'm part <laughs> semi-retired. So I'd be embarrassed. I'm sitting, you know, one of your speakers are going on and there I am, uh, uh, you know, slobbering asleep, asleep. I mean, well, come on. You've now, you've now challenged the, the, the wonderful content team at NGA to do, do things to keep you yeah. awake next year at BEC. Okay. So some, somewhere, oh, except- Andrew, Andrew Herring is watching this right now. He's taking notes and he, he knows that, uh, he, you know, he, he's the best, best out there. He will make this happen. So yeah. between him and the yep. great people there, they'll make it happen. So, but, uh, uh I'll, I'll accept that. good, good, good. Well, I obviously, uh, I'm thrilled you did this and, and you were worried about this and, and this was awesome and we could go on and on and on, but, uh, I think it's, I think we covered everything. At least I had, well, so. No, but I didn't, I got one, 
I, I got one question I wish you would ask. What is, what am I most proud of? What are you most proud of? Okay, go for it. What are you most proud of? In this industry, in this industry. In this industry, yeah. Okay, is all the people that, that I've worked with over the years of what they've become yeah. and how successful, successful. You know, we have people out there you mentioned Bob Cummings, but mm -hmm. you know we have uh, Terry Hessens. Yeah. You know we have Rob Talianis. Yep. You know we have Jeff Zishis. Yep. We have you know the the Tony Cambers of the world. You know I can go on and on and on, and I, I don't mean to miss anybody. Oh no no. But uh, yeah, that's I mean the, that's the thing. That's the thing that is so important to me that I could die tomorrow and be proud of the fact. And the most one, the one that I'm most proud of is you. And I got to tell you, brother, I got to tell you, you, you always people, you think you're blowing smoke up my rear end. You're not. And I got to tell you something, what you've done for this industry and how you joined us years ago from being a, you know, a, a producer at a local TV stations and you were making your $6 an hour or six fifty, dollars and I paid you six seventy five dollars yeah. an hour. And it's an ongoing joke between me and you and what you've done and how you've grown in the industry and how you've become, um, you're a fixture. You know, it, oh. it used to be people would go to you and say, oh, are you Stevie's brother. Now they come to me and say, are you Max's brother? And I got to tell you something, bro. I am so proud of that, that that is, that is, you know what? My, my life's complete because of that in this industry. So thank you for doing that. The industry thanks you, and you're doing a great job. And keep it up, and uh, you make your you make your little you make your little bro very proud. <laughs> wow! Well, it, um, thank you. Um, and this uh, better stay on. This better not be cut. I, I could edit it. Yeah, I. I but uh, this, not gonna be, this yeah. better not be edited, or or we're we're gonna have a little problem. <laughs> you'll you'll start your own podcast. Yeah, that that could be oh, yeah. the, the Stevie P pod. Right. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, with Stevie P speak because yeah. I, I do uh, have my own set of words sometimes that I know Bobby Hartung loves it. He calls it Stevie P speak. Yeah, I think it's there. Well, a special I, word. Thank, thank you though. That I appreciate that. I try hard, and and it was the opportunity, obviously, that you and the folks that we got to work with, you know, gave me uh, to to grow in this industry. And I remember, I remember when you sent me to a an NGA show for the first time before it was glass build, and and it was. It was really amazing. And I, I mean, I remember I talk about it on the pod about, you know, you taking me to the Pittsburgh right. airport and us looking at the glass and, uh, you know, things like that. So, no, it, you got me going and I appreciate that. And uh, I just got to keep hustling for this world. I think we, we've got a great industry, great industry and great well, people. I think we I think we do. And I think we it's just not sexy enough and we got to get some young people interested in it so it, we, it can move on to the next level. And you're doing a great job with that. And that's the only advice I give to everybody watching this is really start paying attention to the young and start getting them trained. Go to the local schools, go to the, the local vocational schools and let's get some young people into it because I'm, I'm scared. I'm very afraid of what's going to happen to our industry if we don't get young people involved. Yeah, me too. Me too. And that's what we're going to keep doing. So that's, uh, that's for sure. But you, you nailed it. You're, you're the best, my bro. You're, you are the best. I love you. And I thank you so much for uh, coming on here. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you rock. This was fantastic. You, you got me speechless here at the end. I don't even know how to end this podcast now. So that was so good. So thank you. Thank you. Talk to you later. All love right. You, that, that this is, this was the wrap up of the, this month's podcast. That is Stevie P. I'm Max Perlstein from, uh, from the Fabricator podcast. Thank you everybody for watching and, uh, we will see you next month. Oh, the music is stopped. <laughs>